that verse that you quoted in Revelation 14. Notice it says, everlasting gospel. Right. If your gospel doesn't have any fear, something is wrong. Something is terribly... Everlasting gospel and fear are found in the same verse. You know, these angels, like our brother Dick said, man, these guys are these guys are messengers. You do have angels going and delivering a message, be it in the sky or whatever. When you were talking about that uh, sky evangelism, uh, when uh, when New York City had their 50th homo anniversary, we thought, wow, we need to do something for those guys. You know, we didn't want to go down to New York. So, you know, being creative people that we are, we decided to look into planes. You ever seen those planes that put puffs of smoke in and can actually put a message? Yeah. Well, we came up with a message of AIDS judgment. Wow. All right. 50th anniversary. Amen. Hey, ran us a little bit of money, but, you know, we didn't have to go there. We can stay in Los Angeles and take care of New York. Yeah. We told the pilot, well, do you want to do this? He said, God bless you guys. I'll drop napalm, no extra charge. <laughs> so it is uh, the big day, and uh, this guy's flying in route, and it's him and about six other planes. They're all... They're all going to pop some, uh, some cloud uh, smoke and make some, make some words in the sky. And it's too windy. So he has to uh, make a big U-turn, hopefully come back and uh, do it again. Way too windy. So he's telling his other pilots, he says, I'm going to give it one more shot. If it doesn't do it, we're going to have to abort the mission, fly in. We'll try to refund the money to these guys. Well, the third trip around, the wind calmed down, and there over the, the city of Manhattan was the word AIDS judgment. Wow. wow. Awesome. <laughs> totally awesome. Yes. It's amazing what you can do. Credit cards, you can do almost anything. Now, the guy got in trouble. The guy actually contacted us, and he says, Brother, they want to burn my hangar down. I guess that, uh, you know, the... the, the uh, the, uh, they, there's numbers on the plane and somebody did catch the numbers wow. and then they backtracked it and they found out who it was and uh, God bless the guy for even wanting to do it yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I said guys it is amazing what you can do God gave us an incredible mind don't limit the Holy Ghost yeah. brother you're talking about fearing God you're talking about God watching One time the smock girls were staying at our house, so I took them out to Hollywood. Take them out preaching in a couple of places. We're in Hollywood Boulevard in front of the Chinese theater. This is where all the movie stars put their handprints and footprints. It's always filled with people. And uh, we're preaching, or I am, and uh, one of the girls, smock girls, came up and she says, Brother Reuben, uh, there's a guy over here who wants to talk to you. Okay, you know, I pretty much finished up my, my preach and then turned around and started walking to the guy. This was a guy who was a minister in a church that puts us up in another city. I won't mention. And when I'm walking towards the guy, you talk about the fear of God. His jaw almost hit the ground. His eyes were as big as can be. I have no idea. You know, I walk up to him. Hey, brother, when did you get to L.A.? His response was, Brother, I came to Los Angeles because I know nobody. I came here to sin. I came here to get involved in sin as much as I can because nobody knows me. Wow. wow. And I'm walking down Hollywood Boulevard. Who do we bump into? 